Hello, and welcome to our Scribe Insight presentation featuring data integration for ERP. Our focus applications today, including Scribe Insight, uh, will be Microsoft Dynamics NAV. Now, whether you're integrating from a uh, hosted application, uh, an on-premise application, uh, or a, um, a cloud-based application, it's a Scribe Insight application that can be very strategic for you in terms of providing data at its specific point of need. And it all begins with the uh, Scribe server, a small footprint piece of code that resides on your application server. Uh, could be your database server. However, if you have a high volume transaction environment uh, that uh, you, you, you're a little bit concerned about uh, degradation across the network, then you can certainly install this on a, uh, a dedicated server. Now, the Scribe Insight application is composed up of two components, uh, the first being the uh, workbench. Now, the workbench is basically where the designer would go ahead and create, orchestrate those data maps so as to dictate how data flows between a source and a target. That the designer can be a, um, a person that has the appropriate skills with regards to the target application, understands the business logic uh, associated with that application, uh, then that person can certainly create the appropriate data maps uh, abiding by those rules, those business rules within that application. Now, the data maps that uh, are created via the workbench, uh, there may be multiples to support a specific business process. Uh, could be the order to uh, invoice process. Uh, multiple data maps we call a template and Scribe software does provide templates free of charge downloaded from our website that really uh, supports migrations, integrations and they come in a variety of different designs. Uh, could be just a moving data from point A to point B, it could be those process integration type of uh, uh, templates so certainly a great starting point for our customers to download this. Uh, implement it as is or modify it, uh, certainly open to that, uh, modify it to meet your specific business requirements. So that being the workbench, the first component of the Scribe Insight application. Now the second uh, component of Scribe Insight is the console. Now the console is pretty much an administrative type of application. This is where the, uh, the admin user would dictate uh, how uh, data maps would be fired uh, transparently unattended. Uh, we support four different types of process events within our application. They are file based, time based, query based, and queue based. Uh, our demonstration today will be showing you a file based integration process but uh, in addition to being able to control uh, those automation uh, features within the console to run those maps unattended uh, we also have monitors uh, as well as alerts uh, within the uh, console application. Now those monitors can be system based uh, they can certainly be business based as well uh, and if one of those monitors should uh, fire an alert will be generated and that alert can be directed to a specific individual or group of individuals uh, letting them know that this monitor has been fired and they have been engaged for um, informational purposes uh, or potential uh, support. So that would be the console, that's the second component of our Scribe Insight umbrella product. Now out of the box with the implementation of Scribe Insight, uh, we have various types of connectivity uh, options. As you can see here, application adapters to your far left, as well as connectivity adapters. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about those as we go through this demonstration in terms of what the application and connectivity adapter are, uh, adapters are. But out of the box, uh, you do have the ODBC drivers that allow you to connect into, let's say, MySQL. Uh, a Fox Pro database, pervasive database, just a whole host of um, uh, opportunities to embrace those different data stores that you may have within your organization that you would like to uh, strate strategically involve those uh, within your migration and or integration strategies. Now application adapters on the other hand, these are specific uh, enterprise type application adapters that we built for uh, some of those well known applications, CRM, ERP applications out in the market space today. Uh, we have written those to specifically abide by those business rules that are inherent within the API of those applications. So you can be assured that as you're moving data from a source uh, uh, data store into one of those applications that we use the API, uh, that the level of that, the integrity of that data that you're moving into those applications will be of the highest level. Uh, also, uh, part of our application portfolio 
uh, includes uh, the ability to connect into those uh, hosted, those cloud-based applications out there. Uh, once again, uh, we do have a specific adapter for um, uh, a homegrown application that you may uh, may have deployed uh, within the cloud, SOAP-based uh, type of uh, web services. Certainly via our web services adapter, you can connect into those environments and then include those into your migration and integration strategies. All right, so basically today we'll be focusing, as you can see at the bottom left of your screen there, we'll be focusing on a integration of data uh, between list files. And as you can see, there's a whole host of different list files that we certainly support via those uh, connectivity adapters that I had just talked to you about. Uh, for instance, uh, TXT files, CSV files, uh, XML, XLS, once again, a whole host of different types of list files. Specifically today, we'll be uh, using a CSV file. And this CSV file could be, a, could be generated from, let's say, a legacy database that um, I may want to uh, periodically publish out, drop it into a directory on my Windows network, and appropriately pick it up at, at a specific set time and then include that into my applications. In this case, we'll be using CSV, uh, bringing in products directly into Dynamics NAV. Okay, here's a, a quick look at the, um, the process that I'll be showing today. As you can see to your left there, list files, CSV, bringing that data into the inventory item which is a standard entity, custom or a standard entity within your NAV deployment. Uh, however, as you can see down below there, we, we not only support the standard objects, but any custom objects and or fields that you would, would have created in that uh, NAV deployment. Uh, the ability to move that data is not just migrating that data, but also updating data that may currently exist within your NAV deployment, as well as uh, deletions of that data. So that's kind of the lay of the land. Let's go ahead and show you uh, from a higher level as to what this use case demonstration is going to look like. Uh, once again, it's an integration of data from a CSV file that will basically drop into a Windows folder. Uh, we'll have a file-based integration process, one of those four types of process events that I had mentioned earlier. We'll pick that up automatically unattended uh, and then the uh, one of our scribe integration processes will uh, uh, basically uh, work that data and then move that data into our NAV deployment. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go through this use case. Let me go ahead and bring up um, my environment here so you can see how this all comes together. Uh, a couple things to uh, share with you before we get started into this demonstration. A couple windows that I have uh, shown on the screen here. Uh, the top right window, as you can see, the currently selected uh, text file, it's CSV file. Uh, we're going to use that as our source data that we're going to drop into an incoming folder. And that folder being on the top left of your screen there. Uh, that a CSV file will come into that folder. Our file-based integration process will sense it. We will pick it up, and then the first thing that we're going to do is move that into the uh, transfer directory, the second window at the bottom left there. Uh, we'll move it into there. We'll also rename it uh, to a different file. We have that option. Process it, and then after we process it, we'll delete it so as to be able to support another file that would drop into the uh, uh, the source directory. I could also archive that uh, that file that's dropped into the transfer directory if I want to use that as uh, reference uh, later on during my uh, migration process. Uh, multiple CSV files can certainly drop into that folder. It could be it could use wildcards uh, as a prefix. So star.csv. We'll go ahead and pick that up, rename it to an appropriate uh, target CSV file, and then operate against that. Now before I run this, let me go ahead and show you what the, uh, the CSV file looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. Typical uh, format of a CSV file. You can see the uh, top line there, that would be our column information. Item number, description, substitute exists, uh, bill of materials, etc. And then down below that, each one of those rows would indicate those records that we will be passing into Dynamics NAV. So the first one you can see there, A-217B underscore SD comma, laser printer, uh, so on and so, so forth. 22 uh, records there that will be uh, moving into our NAV deployment. So I wanted you to see that. And again, the uh, item number is A-217B. Now, before I run that, what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead into NAV and just show you what currently exists within our items list. Uh, 
Currently, what you're looking at on the screen is the item page. I'm going to go ahead and just filter this out, and we're going to search for a dash and do a quick view. And as you can see, nothing comes back because we have not migrated that data forward into NAV. All right, having seen that, let's go back. I'm going to grab this uh, CSV file. And this could be an automated process in your environment where this C uh, CSV file is created automatically. Uh, it gets copied into a uh, incoming directory where our integration process is looking for it uh, so as to process it and move that data forward. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, products.csv file. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the incoming folder. So we'll just paste it in here. You're going to see it briefly disappear. Drops into the bottom window, renamed it to template.csv. And then now that it's uh, been removed, we know that that data has been processed and is now in our NAV deployment. Going back into Dynamics NAV, uh, again, we have the filter there, A dash. I'm just going to refresh the screen by hitting the F5 key. And now you can see all the uh, 22 records that we have just passed into our NAV deployment. Uh, here we can certainly open any one of these up to take a look at the details. And here you can see there's that laser printer. Uh, unit of measure, all the data that we would have in the CSV file, we basically mapped it to the appropriate entities within Dynamics NAV. So now that our, uh, our items are in NAV, we can certainly use these uh, for our customers that would like to order them. Uh, so we can come up in here into sales orders and we can go ahead and create a new sales order. For example, we'll go ahead and click on the new icon and we'll do a quick uh, search for a customer that would like to purchase some new product. We're going to choose the Canon group here. And you can see that the appropriate information is related to that account. Down below, we can go ahead and create a line item for this new uh, sales order. So I'll come down here and give it a item type. And uh, we'll come over here and choose the item. We'll go ahead and scroll down this list and let's go ahead and look for that laser printer that we had just migrated forward. And I believe it's coming up shortly here. And there's the laser printer. We have now added that as the uh, line item to this uh, order. Give that a moment to populate the fields. And there you can see laser printer and all the relevant information that would satisfy a sales order within NAV. Now as I scroll down further, you can see we have these other uh, pull downs that we can certainly uh, embrace in terms of this particular order. For instance, uh, foreign trade, if I drill down underneath that, you can see here we have currency code and where you can choose the appropriate currency code for this company. Uh, you may be a global company dealing with um, uh, customers that may be in all different parts of the world and obviously there's different currencies for that. So in that particular scenario, uh, if, if the data that you may currently have within your NAV deployment is more of a static type of, uh, of uh, currency rate, uh, you can certainly use our web services adapter uh, so as to set up a, let's say, the top of the hour, go out to a commercial website, get the latest and greatest uh, currency rate exchange, and pull that down into your NAV deployment so that when I click on, let's say, the euro uh, currency, uh, I will have uh, the most current rate for this particular customer. Okay, so let's go back into our PowerPoint presentation. All right. Our next slide here basically is showing you the adaptability of Scribe Insight. As you can see, this is kind of our universe of the different connectivity options that we have ava available within Scribe Insight. Uh, starting at about 11 o'clock on the screen there, you can see native Oracle, native SQL, uh, we support, we, we provide those types of connectivities out of the box for you so as to embrace those different data stores that you may currently have within your deployment. Uh, going clockwise, uh, an adapter for my Microsoft Outlook. I may have contacts in, in, or contacts in Outlook that I would like to migrate forward into uh, uh, my, uh, my NAV deployment or my CRM deployment. I can certainly use that out of the box Microsoft adapter. Uh, this is an adapter that Scribe software has created and included uh, with our product when you install it. And then keep uh, going around, you can see some of those uh, well-known CRM uh, deployments out there, Salesforce, Sage. Sage also has a uh, contact management system called ACT. Uh, out of the box with Scribe Insight, we uh, provide you some uh, uh, connectivity adapters for those contact man management systems such as ACT and Goldmine. 
Uh, with the ODBC breadth of capabilities that we have within our product, you can see the different application databases uh, that we can connect into. Some of the examples there are PeopleSoft, Siebel, uh, Epicor, just to name a few. Uh, about 5 o'clock, as you see on your screen there, web services, we talked about this earlier, being able to leverage the currency uh, uh, rates that may be out on a commercial site that would be very accurate that you would like to include within your ERP application. So web services would be a, certainly a solution for you there. And then gold mine, as we talked about earlier, XML, being able to um, consume XML that may be published out from a web portal, a web store that you may have, we can certainly consume that. Uh, and we can also publish out XML and make that available back uh, to your web store. So just a whole host of opportunities. And then finishing up with the, the Microsoft uh, Dynamics family of products, as you see on the left side of your screen there. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you very much for your time today. I hope this has been of value to you. If you have any questions, uh, certainly reach out to us. You can see that uh, we have an email address there that you can send us a question if you have about our product. Uh, our website, www.scribesoftware.com. Visit us. Certainly uh, peruse the different links that we have available up there. Or if you'd like to talk to a live person, certainly dial our number there, area code 603-622-5109. So once again, thank you very much. Have a great day.